You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on arts, culture, and cultural awareness and education. In our increasingly multicultural societies and globalized economies, reliance on creative talent and cultural and arts education seems more important than ever. And while competence for culture and education policies in Europe lies with the member states, the EU plays a role too, providing policy and financial support, as well as guidance to help Europeans make a difference in the world. Want to know more? Stay with us. An old Arab proverb gives a powerful piece of advice. If you have only two pennies, spend the first on bread and the other on hyacinths for your soul. Arts and culture have always contributed to shaping communities and common history, but in today's world, cultural and educational policies are vital to the development of skills needed to cope with the complexity of multicultural societies and to qualify for jobs in the fast-growing creative and cultural industries. And while the role of culture in arts in improving social cohesion or in serving as an instrument for social emancipation has been questioned for lacking hard scientific proof, existing studies suggest that arts and cultural education does have an instrumental value. To give you an example, studies have proven the link between learning arts and performance in numeracy and speech, and there's no shortage of projects demonstrating how music can help young people deal with situations of exclusion and other social difficulties. So both UNESCO and the OECD have called for a proper place and recognition of art and culture and education. But there are also socio-economic arguments in favour of arts and cultural education. According to Eurostat statistics, around 6.5 million people in the EU worked in the cultural sector in 2015. That is nearly 3% of the total number of people employed. And the top EU achiever was Sweden with over 6%. And the sector is gaining importance as creative individuals who are able to innovate, work in multicultural teams and adapt to changing environments are in high demand. Arts education is often said to be a means of developing critical and creative thinking, as well as enhancing performance in mathematics, science, reading and writing. It is also believed to help strengthen students' academic motivation, self-confidence and ability to communicate and cooperate with others. But does arts education really have positive effects on non-art skills. Stay with us. An analysis by the OECD comparing the place of arts and culture in European classrooms shows interesting results, especially when observed in combination with the results of another OECD programme, the PISA survey measuring students' performance. The OECD's comparative analysis of the time devoted to artistic education in different mandatory school curricula shows big differences across the EU. But while students in Austria, Finland, Italy and Denmark devote the most hours to studying arts, only Finland ranks second in science, third in reading and sixth in mathematics, reaching the highest scores among EU member states in the PISA 2009 survey. Austria, for instance, ranks 39th in reading and Italy ranks 35th both in mathematics and science. In both cases, much lower scores than other EU countries, which spend less time learning about Leonardo da Vinci or Bach. So how do we explain this? Well, the key seems to be in the way education is delivered. The study concludes that cultural or arts education in itself will not result in open-minded individuals, more equality or social cohesion. Only when it is taught on an equal footing with other subjects and approached in an innovative way can it make a real difference. So how is the European Union supporting cultural education? Let's have a look. Competence for culture and education policies in Europe lies with the member states, though the EU plays a role too by supporting them financially, complementing and coordinating their efforts in the field. The EU supports cultural education through programmes such as Creative Europe, with a budget of 1.4 billion euros for the period 2014 to 2020. It supports cultural education projects covering artistic and media activities from theatre to music and dance to literature, as well as film education. Other EU programmes, such as the European Volunteering Service, also offer support for cultural education projects and youth mobility. The Europe 2020 strategy for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth sets a number of objectives, supported by key initiatives that point to convergence between economic and educational goals. We're talking about the Digital Agenda for Europe, the Innovation Union and Youth on the Move, as well as the Agenda for New Skills and Jobs, which includes a list of key competences for the 21st century. Key competences for lifelong learning were first mentioned by the European Parliament and the Council in 2006, when they recommended including cultural awareness and expression as a transversal competence. 
Cultural competence was understood to comprise knowledge of cultural heritage and popular contemporary culture, self-expression in various media, styles and forms, and openness to intercultural communication. In 2017, the Commission launched a public consultation to assess whether the key competences recommended at the time by MEPs are still valid and to identify the key skills needed for the labour market of the future. The European Parliament continues to follow the issue closely and in September 2017 it adopted an own initiative resolution on a new skills agenda for Europe. In a fast-changing, more globalised and digitalised world, MEPs believe that transversal and transferable skills such as social and intercultural skills, digital skills, problem solving and entrepreneurship are key and need to be encouraged. MEPs are also concerned about media literacy in Europe Understood as the ability to access, analyse, evaluate and create information in different media, media literacy is essential to encouraging critical thinking. So in 2016, the Parliament launched a pilot project to help citizens of all ages think more critically and thus be able to distinguish information from propaganda, detect fake news and use social media in a mindful way. So let's end this podcast with a word from a very critical thinker, Albert Einstein. He said logic will get you from A to B, imagination will take you everywhere. So let's nurture the mind. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Thank you.